Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Sims Complete, and we got Phil Sims alongside myself, Matt Sims. Wow, that was a terrible introduction, wasn't it? Um, it sure was. You yeah, want, how you, you doing, must, Phil? You want, me, you want me to tell the truth or lie? So <laughs> yeah. it was terrible. And before we came on, you know, I tell the people all the time, right? you know, that my son is, uh, what's the word for? Sometimes he can be a jerk. You should hear the things he says about me before we come on. Hey, you dumbass, put your screen, you know, rah, rah. Oh, okay. Well, I will say that from the uh, comment section on the Believe YouTube page that yeah. a lot of people are definitely confused why I don't call you dad on the show. Uh, they, they're like, yeah, why you are you calling? Why are you calling your, your dad by his first name? You're so weird. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I haven't called you dad in. Man. I don't know if he ever did. <laughs> That's not true. You That's called me a lot true. of names over the years. I can't remember them all, but a lot of them I can't repeat here. I don't know I don't like about the curse. that. That's not oh, yeah. true. That's not Honest true at all. Come but on, son. Honesty is, is the best thing. So I definitely the coined truth. the nickname Big Phil, though. That's for sure. But I did well, not yeah. call you these other names that uh, maybe Christer ha Christopher has recreated since then. Well, yeah. Well, I think you were part of that, too. You recreated it into something. See, it was okay, Big Phil, but now it's, you know. <laughs> now, it's, now it's morphed it's, into something else, something evil. The big, the big effort. You the know, big so, effort, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. One day I'm going to write a book. I'm going to tell the truth about my boys. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My yeah, chapter is definitely going to be way shorter than Christopher's. I know that. but uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> we had a lot more to deal with maybe with you than we did him. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. I don't, oh, okay. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not really, nice. actually. Not really. No, I know. Uh, so, <laughs> well, listen, I was coming back from the doctor this morning. Yeah. Skin doctor as usual. You know, I go in the skin doctor and she's always the same. Bill, we got a lot of work to do. No kidding. That's why I'm here. But yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I'm on listen to the radio. I, I think it was um I'm not sure which channel I was listening to. Sirius XM probably. And uh they were doing ranking the quarterbacks in each division. So I thought, wow, okay, how interesting. We're gonna do that today too for our last two divisions. What we're division start were out they talking about though? Just uh, out of curiosity. Where, well where they you I had they hadn't gotten to it. They were talking about all the drafted rookie quarterbacks. Oh, okay. First. Right. They wanted to kind of who's in the best situation. Yeah. And you know, oh my God, you know, so we're these quarterbacks, it's just it's nonstop. That's the way it is. It is. Everywhere I go, everything I do, I can throw over here in the field with you some nights. <laughs> yeah. And the first thing, well, which quarterback you like in the NFL? I mean, it's <laughs> right. it's well, everybody talks about it really in our area, obviously, because we are in this New Jersey, New York area. The first question is, so, so what do you think about Daniel Jones? And, and then it's oh, sure. and then it's all the other quarterbacks after that. Yeah. But yeah, you, know, you, you you believe in Daniel Jones? I'm like, <laughs> just yeah, every that time. don't you get a lot of Aaron Rodgers stuff, too? I do. You know, uh, yeah, sometimes definitely. I don't know. I guess I'm surrounding myself with more Giants fans these days. Yeah. So that's well, that we, seems to be the discussion more often. Me too. And then, you know, I meet a lot of Jet fans too, you know, especially when I go out to New York City, whatever, meet a lot of Jet fans. And when they try to get smart, I go, yeah, hey, hey, how's that working out for you? <laughs> That's I, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really going well. So, <laughs> yeah. of course, you can say thing about the Giants too, That's but the true, Giants too. do have four Super Bowl winning teams. That's so right. That's that's pretty good stuff right there. Remind them, Phil. Remind them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not me. I wouldn't do things like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, all right. Let's get going. We're going to do let's the go. AMCs. We're going to go with these quarterbacks. Uh, so we're going to start with number four. And I'll let you go first today since you're younger than me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So I, at number four. I think we're going to have the same one. So let's go. Yeah. I mean, I think our list will be actually Probably. I identical today what, what movie is that from phil um hold it i know it come on um, you should know this down south fred the gwynn two, the two youths yeah yeah he's joe pesci come on man and of course my favorite actress i love her um let's see oh come on i can't think of the name my cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny. Yes, you should know Joe. this man. That's a. Classic. I know. I've watched it twenty yeah. times. I know. I, every time <laughs> I watch, I laugh because it is funny. It is very and Fred, good. And Fred Gwynn, the judge, he's awesome in, he in the movie. When you just kind of just watch him, so and of course they all were. They were all good. And what's the, the girl's name? The OG uh, Herman Munster, too. Right. That, that's where oh, he yeah. really kind of started his career. Yeah, I was watching him after school. Herman Munster, the Munsters, yeah. and you know, all those kind of. I guess I don't know what you call them um, sitcoms, I, wh whatever they were. They were very yeah. funny. 
Who is the girl in My Cousin Minnie? Uh, why am I blanking on this right now? I'm oh. looking it up right now, actually, because I can't. Oh, even... Marissa are. Tomei. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. She is great. And in... she's good in everything. Yeah. She's a good and actress. She looked... And she looked on. What was the word? I hate to be this way, but just how did she look in My Cousin Minnie? She looked great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling my mother yeah, tell her. Phil. you know you know what diana would say your mother she'd go Whoa. oh he's right she did look good <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> That's just, she yeah. wouldn't even disagree so all right go ahead give me number four nfc east quarterback rankings what is your number four you did it again man the afc east oh I, did, I said a well no i said nfc yeah. Oh, okay. We started with AFC, then you said okay. NFC. Now <laughs> we're going with the AFC. AFC. My man. I got it right. Hey, look, see this right here? I got it. AFC. AFC. <laughs> it says it right on the top. All, All right. right. So at number four, yeah. Gobi Percet slash Drake May. I don't expect Drake May to be the day one starter, but I do expect no. to see, you know, Drake May at some point in this season. Uh I, I think, you know, we kind of have to put Really, if we did any list at any position or any standing, I feel like with the AFC East, we are going to have the Patriots at the bottom of that list right now because they just have the most to prove, I feel like, out of everyone in the division. I, I yeah. do believe that Jacoby Brissett is a really solid NFL quarterback, a tough football player, uh, has played a lot of football, is really just your your quintessential solid number two, but then can also hold his own for a long duration of time being in that starting lineup. We've seen that throughout his career. Uh, big dude, strong dude, throws the ball pretty well down the football field. Every now and then the ball gets away from him as far as uh, you know his fundamentals go. But good leader, great guy for the locker room, and I think a really good influence too for the young QBs, including Joe Milton and also Drake May in, the, in that QB yeah. room. Uh, so yeah. at number four, Jacoby Brissett. Of course, that's who I have too. Jacoby Brissett, he's better than just a backup. Yeah. He's a 1B to me. Okay. And last year, why well, I put my glasses on and looked, he's down in Washington and, you know, backing up there. And the game he did play, he only went 18 of 23, three touchdowns, completed 78% of his passes. He's thrown for over 10,000 in his career. And I think what I like about him is he's big. He can take the hits. Yep. He has a, I think, a really solid big, not maybe big time, but close to it, NFL arm. I right. think he's pretty accurate throwing the football. He's tough. I'll never forget this. I was doing a Thursday night game up in New England, and they were playing the Houston Texans. Jimmy Garoppolo had a sh shoulder but problem, and they thought, well, he's still going to be good to play in the game. Well, he comes in that night and says, I can't go. My arm, a shoulder, not doing it. Jacoby Percet, if I remember right, had a torn ligament in his thumb. He couldn't even grip yeah. the football. And right. he went in there and played through a couple passes, Ran the ball, whatever. Now, New England was much better than Houston at the time, and they won, but it just told me about him. Right. He didn't even hesitate. Hey, I'm ready to go. Right. And I think he's a couple things. Alex Van Pelt, the offensive coordinator now in New England, love his offense. I love it a lot. Deep throws downfield, play actions. We saw what Joe Flacco did. This fits Jacoby Percet and Drake May perfectly. Right. That's what I think when I watch him. That's what I look at them as. How would they succeed? What kind of offense? And this is exactly what Alex uh, Van Pelt does. And you said it, and it's real. Jacoby Brissett is truly the quarterback that will worry as much about Drake May as he will himself. Right. And that's what they want. That's what they got. And, man, I, I don't know what to say. I really like him a lot in his play, his body type, his arm. But his personality and who he is, it's just great for a football team, Matt. Yeah, it definitely is. And I think this this football team needs that, right? I mean, just you yes, know, first time head point. coach, first time, you know, offense court in this new environment with this first time head coach. You know, there's just a lot of new pieces, I feel like, to the outlook of of this organization from all those years with Bill Belichick and the Tom Brady years to now this, right. you know, this trying to re-identify exactly who it is they are, right, and, and creating their new identity going forward. But you're, you're right, yeah. though, too. I think Alex Van Pelt's offense kind of fits the mold of that area, 
right? Yeah, it does. Uh, of Good of point. the weather and, and the stadium and kind of how you need to win in New England, especially late in the year, right? Is is being able to run the ball effectively, still have great play action passing, still be under the center for the majority of your offense because you want to win at the line of scrimmage. So I think all those things really play into, like you said, all the quarterbacks' favors for sure. And yeah. you know, Kendrick Bourne. Very good receiver. I feel like someone that, uh, you know, is probably better than what we think because of the fact that we just haven't seen enough of it really the past few years with their, you know, offensive blunders. They signed KJ Osborne this offseason from Minnesota. I think that's a big one. I think he I like is another him. solid signing. football player. And they get Jalen Polk from Washington. Uh, he was kind of the, you know, 1B receiver there to Roma Dunze with Michael Penix and, and that football team with the Washington Huskies. So I think right. uh, they're doing the best they can to make those slow improvements and build for the future with this football team. Yeah, last thing I'll say about this Patriots uh, quarterback situation, all that, uh, you know, Jacoby Percet, good leader for, you know, as we said, Drake May, but also Joe Milton. Yeah, And, you know, what they want to do is one day they want to get Joe Milton to a point where we think he's good enough now and we trust him to be the backup. Right. And so here's the thing. You said it, New England. Or, or trade they, him or trade him for, you or, know, future, you know, investments. Maybe that could happen. It, it depends yeah. on how he shows himself. Right. But I think you said something that is really true. New England. I did many games up there. On a great game a day for a quarterback is a 20-mile-an-hour win. And I mean, it's, it's, yeah. come on, it's, it can get rough up there. So you need, you need a quarterback with a strong arm and all three of these quarterbacks we're just, we've talked about all three have really good arms where they can, they can still succeed, even if it's windy, cold, whatever. Right. And that was not the case really for new England last year. I don't mean to, I'm not going to be mean or anything, but they had quarterbacks that didn't have the physical capabilities to have great sustained big time success. Right. And uh, that's why they went out and they changed that whole roster. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right. Point. So th no, is that good? Number That was number that's four? Number four. We're both in agreement. Yeah. Now, now we get into some good stuff here. <laughs> All right. This, go ahead. This will you be lead the, the way. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go at number three. Yeah. Come I'm on, going man. to a Tonga Bailoa, number okay. three in the division. I know. Right. Everybody's going to say, oh, you should – he should be number one, whatever, all these. But no, I think I if know. we were drafting them just for this season, how would we draft them? I mean, there's many ways to look at this. And Tua did a great job. You you talked about it. Mike McDaniel did a – it's a tremendous offense. Then they right. went out and got OBJ to be the third receiver. Now, Love it. how would you like to have that with, with Mike McDaniel? And he made a great comp, a comment once in a press conference that I, I don't think I'll ever forget. He goes – if our quarterback has to look at one receiver, then find the next one, we did a bad job yeah. because we got to design plays where the one he's supposed to look at is going to be open. Right, and I right. went, wow, what a what an endorsement. Just yeah. it, what a thing to say. But it does explain him a lot. A lot of window dressing, a lot of stuff. Tua took advantage of it, no doubt, last year. I thought it did slow down at times as the year went on. Right. You know, it got a little tougher sometimes. And, you know, you and I have talked about this on these podcasts and to each other. The thing that makes me come up with Tua, late in the year, Jets, you know, going there, uh, going to Buffalo and playing these, going to New England. They Kansas can all City. be bad. Well, Kansas City, which we saw in the playoffs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that kind of sticks with me. The Buffalo game at the end of the year, I did not think he played well at all. And, then, of course, in Kansas City, just watching the game as a fan, I just early in the game, I went, oh my God, they're, they're not going to be able to throw the ball. Right. I know he threw a touchdown to Tyreek Hill, but it wasn't like he was wide open and he made a great throw. Right. He, he underthrew it. Tyreek Hill made an adjustment, whatever. So, hey, I got great confidence in what they do on the offensive side. And um, to uh, I just see some of those liabilities. That's why he's number three in this, di this division for me. But because of some of the things I just said, of course. 
And, and a lot of the big discussion surrounding two of this offseason really has been the fact that he's kind of slimmed up. He's lost weight. You know, the year before he's coming back from the concussions and all those things, he bulks yeah. up, he gets bigger, he gets stronger. Now he's kind of reverting back to, I want to be lighter. I want to be faster. I want to be a little quicker in the pocket, moving all those things. How do you feel about that change or kind of like his player, uh, you know, uh, how he's kind of morphed into this NFL player. Do you like the changes that he's made going into this season, being a little bit lighter and slimmer to his frame? I like the lighter and uh, slimmer much better than I do. Let's bulk up and do that to protect himself. Okay. Um, you know, his bulking up to me was, I, I think he um, naturally can be a big guy, a thick guy, all that. Right. But I like what he's done, trimming up. He's going to be looser, more agile, and no matter what, even if he's not training to get quicker and faster, he will be because he's moving around less weight on his body. Right. And I think, too, sometimes you recover. That's, uh, you know, faster, whatever. And I want to just see, you know, I think one thing I do want to see from Tua, yes, he's a great passer. Is he a great thrower? And the, that answer is no. And I want to see if it – being trimmer, a little more dynamic and all that is going to give him a little more pep on the football. If it does, then it's just going to push that offense higher up than it already is. Right. And we know the scheme, the town around him, all those things are really good. Absolutely. And let's see if he can improve to not to match it. Cause he showed that he could last year. He was in the MVP race almost to the end, mm -hmm. but to be the driving force behind it to make sure, or to, to make us believe that they are a true Super Bowl contender. Right, right. And I feel like they are, you know, they are kind of on that edge of, you know, do we consider them a contender or are they still, you know, kind of that and that are they a wild card team that maybe can win that first round? And really, that's about it. And I think a lot right. of that has to go to just Mike McDaniel and really how he develops as a head coach. Uh, we discussed this multiple times, like you said earlier, just how creative he is, even the comment that you made from his interview, how he does a great job of getting number one open, right? right. But the one thing that I think comes up most often, right, you see Tua's lack of physical ability to really be physically dynamic as a thrower in important games, but then also to the offense itself being able to kind of impose their will on defenses at times. If the, you know, the gizmos and gadgets and the smoke and mirrors of our offense aren't just firing on all cylinders. And we saw that with the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, they were a great team that just got up in the face of the Miami Dolphins, really were aggressive at the line of scrimmage, didn't get all this free releases or let all these trick plays get all this open space. And that really, I feel like, uh, you know, it, it kind of strangled them in their offense and how they find their rhythm. So, that is something I think Mike McDaniels as a whole, along with Tua, they need to continue to develop that, you know, for their future progress or just be so damn dominant, you know, in the regular season that they just get home field advantage. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. That's that's one way to eliminate some of those problems. <laughs> right. But, you know, you know, again, there's quite a few cities when you start talking about the hierarchy, Baltimore, Buffalo, the Jets, New England, Kansas <laughs> City. Wow. Right away, that's that's a pretty big group of teams. If yeah. you go play in those situations, no matter what time of year it is, you can run up against something that's tough on quarterbacks' physical abilities Cincinnati. to perform in that. And Cincinnati yeah. can't be too, yeah. Right. So Pittsburgh, I mean, Cleveland. it just keeps going. Yeah. Cle oh, well, Cleveland <laughs> might be the hellhole of all, weather-wise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come no. on. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Could, but you're right. Yeah, it really you're is. Right. Um, all right, that's pretty good. So he, we good. got Tua. So we'll get a lot of feedback, and people are going to hate on you. Uh, for us picking him number three, and uh, well, but you know, as we go along, okay, let's let's just go ahead. Number two, number two. I think a, we're both going to agree. Wait, the AFC East. Okay, I said it right. <laughs> yeah, you did it. I know. Yes, yeah, so you're still making fun of me for last week. When I was talking about one thing and did the other division, I don't know what to. I mean, was, Phil, we were like twenty minutes into the show and you talked about a whole other division all of a sudden. So, well, I was it, trying it to really <laughs> trying to see if you were alert and, and staying with me. So, yeah, okay, right. is it me this time at number two? Yeah, it's my turn. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, number two, oh, who you number got, player? Two is going to be Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yep. and you know, I think another thing, I'm just say it real quick. They got Tyrod Taylor backing him up this year, which I which, love. I do too. Yeah. You know, he's gonna he can fit any system. He's great for the starting quarterback. He's good for the team. You you name it, it's just check, check, check all the way down. 
That's he, right. He can be a great backup, no doubt. Aaron Rodgers, yeah. Listen, I still do believe in that arm. Um, he's going to run an offense that Nate Hackett runs, which he knows extremely well. And hell, he does. He's teaching them. He teaches other players on the team that because he's been in it so long. Yeah. And knows so much. And no matter what we say, a couple things. Aaron Rodgers is very smart. Uh, football. I'm just talking about football. Football right. smart. And then the talent. Just when I watch him on TV all the time, they're always talking about it. That ball comes out of his hand the right way. Uh, when you see him in person, you, you you can make you a believer that he is still a a great thrower of the football and can be a great passer too. Right. And you know the one thing I think he'll do is I don't expect Aaron Rodgers. You tell me what you think about the year. I don't see him putting up these big numbers every week. I think he's going to be great. And I've said this many times in the past. He is a really really good game manager. Right. And he can manage games by throwing the ball four yards and five yards is about as well as anybody I know. He's <laughs> right. never I'm, – I'm, I'm serious. He, I know. He is not scared of, you know, it's second and eight and getting three yards. All yeah. right, third and five, right in my wheelhouse again. Get rid of right. the ball quick. Throw a dart to somebody that's just barely open and he makes it happen. I'll never forget, and I know I've said this too, he's out in Arizona and they're playing and they're getting kind of manhandled. Uh, he's in Green Bay. They're getting manhandled. But he is going to get rid of the football so quick and right. just massaging the game and making it work. And I think we're going to see a lot of that when we look at the New York Jets, their receiving core, how they run their team with a great defense. I think that pulls an offense back sometimes, and I think that's the right thing too. So that's why I got Aaron Rodgers there at number two. Yeah, he's number two in this division. And, and listen, it, two is great, you know, but Aaron Rodgers is still – has the ability to be an MVP like caliber football player along with to along with you know the the man who is yet to be named on our list and you know that's what's exciting about this division that if you know these guys can stay healthy this is really going to be a super fun race in this division that that really will be that much more of a battle compared to what we saw last year because of Aaron Rodgers' injury. So that'll be the big question mark. Just, you know, how confident, how healthy he feels, you know, obviously coming off the Achilles injury. Uh, you know, he is getting up there in age. So just being confident and, and, and being strong in the pocket that way. Are we going to see a little bit more of a... Uh, Peyton Manning aspect to the game at times where it's a little bit like Chuck and Duck and let's not take any unnecessary hits when we have to. Uh, right. But the skill group itself, though, if Mike Williams can stay healthy, we know how good Garrett Wilson could be. We hope to see more of what Garrett Wilson is really capable of. Alan Lazard, big, strong, physical guy. you know. And then really it kind of comes down to just Brees Hall, Braylon Allen, the rookie from Wisconsin, you right. know, I think this team is built, like you're saying, a little bit more on an old school thought process of just let's just uh, matriculate the ball down the field and then let Aaron make the two or three throws in the low red zone area with one on one throws that he does so great. Right. His his quintessential, you know, Phil Sims back shoulder throw right to Mark Bavaro <laughs> and things like that. So uh, that's really where this team is built. The great thing for them, too, and I think for Jets fans. The, the bulking up the offensive line with just depth, right? So Morgan Moses, Tyron Smith, Elijah Vera Tucker now moves back into guard where he is more familiar right. and comfortable with and being more consistent. So right. I think overall this team is built for, you know, long-term success for the throughout the season through the playoffs. And now really just let's piece it all together. And I like the fact that it seems to be a quiet off season two for the New yeah. York Jets. Yeah. yeah. It, well, it was until somebody missed mini camp. But yeah. It, yeah. I know. All right. It, it's over. over. It, yeah. yeah. Who cares? I don't even <laughs> care about it. To be honest, I don't, I don't even talk about it. I will say this. I would be shocked if Aaron Rodgers is in the MVP race because of how we describe the football team. He's not going to put up the gaudy numbers. Now, if he takes the team and all of a sudden, Late in the year, we look at him and they're 12 and three or, you know, something like that. You go, well, he's a just he might be the huge part of that would get him in the MVP race, even without the numbers. See, that, because, I agree. I don't think the numbers necessarily have to match MVP like stuff, because if he well, has that's what that, everybody judges them. If he has just, that 28 to five touchdown to interception ratio and you're right, the Jets are a 12 and three football team. I think the right. New York media will take care of that for him alone. OK. 
That's interesting, but it you know, but you you know, come on, we're we're talking about TV, and yeah. you know, hey, let's talk about it. I know Mike Jets Greenberg are. will sell it. I know yeah. if that's if that's the yeah. stat line, and the yeah. and the Jets are doing it. I know Mike Greenberg will make sure that he is. How can we oh, not yeah. consider my friend Aaron Rodgers? I mean, what yeah, he well, is doing, you know, it just, Matt, I here love be, when he gets so excited about the Jets. Yes, he does. Here's the other side, though. Well, you know, look at his quarterback rating and, you know, right, this. Right. And, you know, they'll get into all these numbers and, you know, oh, yeah. my God. That's why, well, whatever. I don't want to get into that story either. But it, it is an interesting team this season. I yeah. think they they all understand that this really is like uh, we got to put it together this year or we're, we're all out, you know. And I think that's why, other than the mini camp snafu, why it has been relatively quiet you know, on the home front for the New York Jets because right. they really are just trying to like batten down the hatches and, and get back to work after last year's such exciting build up to the season with hard knocks and all those things. So it's it, right. it's it's really exciting. I look forward to it as a as a New York fan in general of just seeing the Jets and Giants kind of take that next step forward. Well for the Jets it's gonna be big news always. It's either going to be good or bad. You know, so <laughs> right. if it falls if it falls apart, then it's still going to be a big story. If it's great, it'll be a big story. All right, right you're you got to give the next one. We it was hard to figure out who we were going to put at one. I know, but I did it. I, <laughs> I studied it. I looked at all the numbers <laughs> and all the stuff, and I it was tough. It was really hard. <laughs> yep, and, and you know who it is? It's Josh Allen. And, and yeah, how can it not be Josh Allen? Right? I mean, he's yeah. he's arguably a top five quarterback in the NFL. Uh, where you put him in that top five? That's that's totally up to you. But he's absolutely in that top five. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and, and really, I really am excited for them as well. And even Joe Brady, offensive coordinator, who who assumes the role halfway through the year last year after the the Ken D Dorsey debacle and firing. Uh, which is, you know, unprecedented, I feel like, for us to see that, you know, especially for a team that's potentially contending for a Super Bowl. But it seemed like those two really meshed extremely well. Uh, right. Despite what maybe Buffalo Bills fans think, you know, I still have faith in Sean McDermott. I think that he is a phenomenal football coach. You know, defense only gave up, I think, like 18 points per game last year, which is fourth in the NFL. So, like, dude knows how to coach. This team's just got to figure out how to win some of those gritty, tough games against, you know, one of the greatest dynasties that we've seen in the game recently with the Kansas City Chiefs and a few other really good football teams like we've mentioned in the AFC. So, um, you know, my question to you is, like, because we know how great Josh Allen is, right, and his talent and what he brings to the table for this football team. He's, he's really a one-man show, it seems like, a lot of the weeks. Are you concerned with Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills skill group going into this season? Uh, obviously, with Stefan Diggs departing oh. for Houston. No, I'm not. I'm not okay. as concerned about that as I am with their defense. Can it hold up and be okay. what we expect from them and Sean McDermott? Can Von Miller, who's saying some nice things during the offseason, can he have one more rebound where he is a factor in games right. and can – you know, affected with pressure on the quarterback, sacks, whatever comes about. So I think what we saw from Joe Brady last year, I have extreme confidence in what he's going to do. Okay. And I look at the skill group, you know, with, as we talk about skill groups, will we put them in the top 10 in the NFL? No, I don't think we would even think about that. But it is it is Josh Allen, his movement, his incredible power throws – yeah. All that stuff, that is going to help this offense so much. And then what they did at the end of the year. I mean, here, let's get into this, too. I, the Josh Allen hate has definitely calmed down a lot. Let's look at the playoff games. Look at his playoff performances. Yeah, They lose because of the coaches in that great game out in Kansas City. The players right. had nothing to do with that. Right. That was a win. you got to be standing on the sideline and go, the game is over. Right. But the coaches lost the game. And then, of course... Everybody goes into the playoff game last year, which I have griped and bitched about so much. And that, uh, it's over. Yeah. But he played great. Not good. Not really good. He was great in that game. Yeah. With doing everything. And they missed the field goal. Just right. like when they played the Denver Broncos. They win the game. Oh, sorry. We had 12 guys on the field. Try again. Right. And they kicked a the field goal and make it. So, uh, you know, Matt, yeah, I think I'll let you talk about the skill groups 
Keon Coleman, they did a really good job of picking up stuff, moving. They had him marked as the guy. They got him. He's, I liked him a lot at Florida State. Big, right. perfect for Buffalo. And I think you got an added added element there too. He's a funny dude. I don't know if he tries to be funny, but <laughs> damn, he's funny. Yeah. So why don't you I, talk I, about the skill group though, as you yeah. You do this? I think uh, Keon Coleman, really good football player, one of my favorite receivers in this draft. And I, I like w exactly what you're saying. Just, you know, the physical presence that he brings to the field. You know, he's big, he's strong, he plays aggressive over the middle. Uh, the amount of tough catches that he made in traffic last year for Jordan Travis and the Florida State Seminoles was was absolutely amazing. And, yeah. and he makes them with relative ease very consistently, it seemed like, each and every football game. So excited for his development as being that receiver one for this group. They got in Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir, Marcos Valdez, Scantling, uh, you know, even Mac Hollins, guys that I think are, you know, tough, gritty, proven NFL football players that, you know, maybe singled out one by one. You're thinking, all right, you know, he's, he's not maybe on the top of the totem pole, but I think as a group, they can mesh very well with each other with a stud like Keon Coleman. And then really, yeah the focus outside of Keon Coleman goes to James Cook and Dalton Kincaid, right? Dalton and Kincaid really just game, yeah. those three guys making sure that they really are just the, the foundation in which your team is built on offensively. And then, of course, like you're saying, Josh Allen's just physical ability to make the five or six throws every game that maybe him and, I don't know, two or three other quarterbacks in the league can make. Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, maybe Justin Herbert, uh, and, and that's really about it after that. You know, that that's very like he's, in a, he's in the class, and is maybe Matt Stafford too, you know, as far as those power throws, those dynamic throws down the field. So um, overall, yeah, is the skill group, like you're saying, fantastic, you know, or uh, one of the best. In, but I think they do all kind of play into each other extremely well. You know, that's and Marcos Vandel Scatlin, I think, is a guy that, like, Super good football player. Everyone got on him for the drop uh, during the regular season, I think, against the Philadelphia Eagles, but right. made a lot of big catches late in the year for that football team, a lot of contested catches, you know, and that's really what they'll need for a player like Josh Allen, who does like to throw those passes into tight coverage, you know, the back shoulders, the aggressive throws down the field where the defense thinks they're covered and he makes their guys uh, open by his power throwing. Well, here, look, we got Josh Allen. We got Dalton Kincaid. If he can even play like he did last year, that's great. We got right. Keon Coleman, who we expect. So you take those three, that's all you need. We got right. Cook in the back, whatever. The rest can, they fill in the blanks. Right. And that's what happens. You don't have to have three number one receivers. You know, when you have one or two, then you're, it, there's going to be plays out there for other guys because of the other, the, the skill, the guys that we look at. Right. And that's that's what I saw from Buffalo last year at the end of the year. They quit focusing completely on Stephon Diggs and moved it all around. And I thought we saw an offense that kind of kept, you know, as a fan, I'm watching the game, well, this has got to be Josh Allen throwing. Oh, it's a run. Oh, it's a screen to this guy. Oh, how did this other guy, who I don't even know he was on a damn team, yeah. caught a pass, he was wide open. It's because of the other skill guys. Right. So, But it's going to be exciting to see this whole division how it plays out with the quarterbacks, their offenses, and just everything we talked about. So that was that was some good stuff. And we agreed on every piece, right? We did. Is that right? We agreed on every single pick in this division. So I look forward. We have one more division to go. That's the NFC East. Right. So tune into the next episode. We'll go through that. I doubt we'll agree on this division, uh, you know, because Big Phil is a, a huge Giants homer. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, wow. it, it, it's going to be interesting. And, and uh, this has been fun, so I, I look forward to doing that last yeah. episode of the NFC East for sure. Yeah, see, my, your mother is listening. See what I told you? I told you. He took another shot at me. She I'm is a big not homer. there. She yeah, she's not. right here. Whatever. She even, she's so mad at you, she don't even want to talk to your ass. So <laughs> let's just let's move on. All right. Hey, that was pretty good, Matt. That's and, all we uh, got. Yep. Sims got Complete it. on Believe. Sims Complete YouTube page as well. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Ask some questions, talk some smack. Uh, you've been very good at that too. Uh, and just so you know, if anyone answers in the comment section, it's not Big Phil, it's me. So uh, you know, just just so you know, just to, just to not get any more hate for Big Phil and some of the comments he makes. <laughs> oh, really? People don't like some of the things I'm saying. No, it's mainly just me. They just want me no. to shut up. <laughs> I'm just giving. You know what? I'm just giving them the truth. 
you know. <laughs> no, you're doing great. They just don't Not, want to hear from me. <laughs> oh, that's that's a lie too. So, all right. Well, good stuff, man. Let's um, have a good all day right. and I'll talk to you later. Hey, you the man. And we'll be back with the next episode for the NSE East Breakdown. Sims Complete, we'll be back. See you.